Hello, everybody, and Merry Christmas from Chop and Brew Central in lovely, not so snowy St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to raise a few small samples of beer with the Chop and Brew crew and say Merry Christmas. I hope you guys had a great day. We just finished our traditional dinner of lasagna, cooked one for dinner and then one to get deep freezed for another time. Thanks to Mommers. Thanks, Mommers. I think Elsa helped too. Thanks, Elsa. You're welcome. So here we are. We're gonna we're gonna have an old standby from our Austin, Texas days, St. Arnold Christmas Ale. We're gonna do that first. Um, you know, they don't usually send this uh, official distribution routes to Minnesota, but we've got some friends uh, from Minnesota that went down to Thanksgiving in Houston and brought some back, and then power fan uh, Daniel Trujillo of the one and only La Ranchera Tortilla, um, Tortilla, I can't say that word, Tortilla Company, sent us a freaking 12 pack of this stuff. So Elsa and I have been able to have one of our favorite holiday beers on pretty much standby in Minnesota over the last month. So I'm gonna pour up a sample for myself and a sample for Elsa and Pat, who I don't think are gonna like hop in front of the camera, but how did everybody's Christmas go, man? Tell me how your Christmas went. Tell me your favorite Chop and Brew related thing you got. Tell me uh, your Christmas, traditional Christmas meal. Mommers. Oh, yum. Check out how decorative our house is. Thank you. Yeah. We got, Elsa got a leg lamp over here that we don't have the right wattage of a uh, bulb for so that'll be getting lit pretty soon that was speaking of get lit pretty soon St. on a Christmas ale copper mm -hmm. lovely multi sweet mm -hmm. just having been in Cleveland where we always enjoy the holiday ales the Northeast Ohio style holiday ales and they're 7.5 25 IBUs but tons of spice this basically reminds me of like what the base beer of those holiday beers would be like without the cinnamon clove ginger honey, all the other things. Mm. What do you think, Mamas? You're live. It's really smooth. I like it. Really yummy. It is extremely drinkable. That's the one thing that most people that we put on this um, here in Minnesota over the last month are just like, that's 7.5%? Mm. It tastes almost kind of like a Scottish light. Yummers. Not Scottish too light, but maybe like a 5% Scottish ale. St. Arnold says, um, pairings with fruitcake, Christmas pudding, squash bisque, 24 IBU, 7.5, two different Pacific Northwest hops, spicy bitterness, floral hop bouquet. They consider it kind of an old ale is how they categorize it. It was their first ever seasonal way back in the day. Their website relays a lot of fun um, stories that people have relayed to them after imbibing a few of these. So yeah, this is a favorite. We cooked with this a couple times since we've had it. We put it in some squash, some roasted butternut squash with a little actual butter, salt, pepper, a little bit of honey uh, in this beer. Cooked with it a few times. We also put it in some sautés, whatever. But this is a taste of Texas for some Texas expats. Daniel Fuller and Art Pace say, hey, ladies. Finish satie. <laughs> so the second beer I want to share, and I've never had this before. So the night I did the Sammy Claus tasting, I asked you guys what your favorite holiday beers were, and a couple of fans said that we have to get, it's not Sammy Claus, it's just the box. This beer from Trogue's Independent Brewing Focus called Mad Elf. I was expecting this to come in just kind of like your holiday ales or like this Christmas ale. This is a very different beast for a holiday beer. It is 11% alcohol. This, by the way, comes compliments of my old school homie, Justin Williams, um, in the marketing squad there. He even sent this lovely letter. He said, love you, brother. Try a Mad Dreams, two parts Dreamweaver, and one part elf. So 
we're going to do that. We're going to taste an unadulterated sample of Mad Elf. And then he sent the ingredients to make the Mad Dreams. So we have their year-round wheat beer that we're going to do. So first time ever having this beer, uh, 11%. The, it has a lot of cherries. Bing, Lambert, Van, Royal Ann, and Montmorency. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Am I saying Lambert right? Okay. Murphy's Law. I'm sure it's Lambert. None of those are probably right. It's Binge, Lambert, Van, Royal Ann, and Montmorency. You never get it right. So um, they also said Pilsner, Munich. Where are my malts at? I believe it was Munich, chocolate malt, and Pilsner. So this is a, uh, this is something not to be messed with, y'all. Mmm, very similar color to the Christmas ale. It's not like it's purple or pink or dark red because of the cherries. Hey, everybody, tell me about your Christmas time. All right, keep your sample straight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right hand, Mad Elf. So Justin Williams, everybody at Troggs in Pennsylvania, huge shout out. It says the yeast is a, they call it spicy Belgian yeast. The hops are, I believe, Hallertau and Sot. So besides the cherries, it's kind of your traditional ingredients. Woo! That is a spicy Belgian yeast, allspice and cloves. Eleven percent, right? Eleven percent, mommers. Oh boy. Oh boy. Whew. That tastes delicious. It's got just enough of that little boozy kick to let you know that it's big. It's got a rich body. It's got a nice finish. I don't know what the finishing gravity is, but the cherry alone. Um, they say we taste chocolate malt, cherries, honey, peppercorn. I'm definitely getting spice, pepper-ish, cherries, cloves. This is the first time I've ever seen this. They have these really cool PDFs that you pull up for the food notes, and they had a complimentary section, a contrasting flavor section, which both I've seen, but they actually point out adverse flavors, which I assume means things to not ever eat for fear of just, like, irreparable clashing. So complimentary, glazed ham, fennel, pears, dates, figs, marshmallow yams, sweet, um, unctuous foods, contrasting flavors, which when you're pairing, sometimes you want something that's not going to just ride right in line with the flavors. Peanuts, no, pine nuts, aged cheddar cheese, coconut, rosemary, roasted chestnuts. So those are things, whether contrasting or complementary, the adverse flavors, which is kind of funny because they're things that I'm like, oh, yeah, salmon, peanuts, cayenne, peppermint, and broccoli. <laughs> so don't pair this beer with broccoli. What do y'all think? It tastes. I agree. It tastes like a like a Belgian double, with a lot of like cherry pie kind of features to it. I like it. I can taste peppercorn in there. Yeah, that's not like anything I've ever had on the holiday beer tip. That's awesome. It could be overly spicy for people though. I could see where that is a a Belgian spice above and beyond what some people might like, but. I'm digging it. I'm going to set it aside. It is 11% after all. So we're going to put together at Justin's, at Justin's suggesting, we're going to do some mad dreams. Get it right. Two parts dream we wrote. I almost reversed it. I almost had delusional dreams. So two parts of dream weaver, which has also never had. Maybe we should taste that separate. Elsa loves a wheat beer, so. That's about two parts. You guys can go sit down if you want. You just, um. No, I want mine. Well, of course. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to feel awkward. Like, So this is Dreamweaver, their wheat beer. I believe it's open fermented, if I read correctly. Open top fermentation. The high croys and a foamy, rocky yeast head crests the side of the fermenter, releasing notes of black pepper, spicy clove, unfiltered and cloudy with yeast, slightly tart, downright refreshing. It is. It's kind of hef-ish. Um, 
you can get that open fermentation notes. It's funny because they point out pepper and clove in this, and we were definitely getting pepper and clove in the elf. So I'm going to top that off. Look at that. Mad dreams to you. Thank you. Uh, we might have to. Oh, I see what you're saying. Sorry, I'm bartending off duty here. Here, just take this and top it off if you want it. I do like that wheat beer. I should come back to that another day. I'm going to leave this one intact. Mm -hmm. I could see that being a very slammable summer beer for sure. 55% wheat, 4.8%. The yeast is South German Hefeweizen, and so that's where you're getting a little bit of that pepper. So here's to your mad dreams, crew of Chop and Brew. Here's to 2019. Hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season. I know we've been kind of off on the episodes, but we've got plans. We've got plans for 2K19. More live things like this. We've got a new web camera, thanks to the support of our Patreon crew of Chop and Brew. If you're not on that, please join before New Year or anytime after New Year. So the Mad Dream is a little more approachable. I can taste anise in it. Anise? anise? Mommers is getting anise. You can come on camera and say this if you want. You don't have to peanut gallery from afar. I don't have to. I could say it. Anise. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I can it. see your anise. <laughs> I can taste the anise. All right. Um, yeah, let's see if there's any comments worth. Elsa said, I got to keep this short because we got Christmas story to watch. We got white Christmas to watch. We kind of slacked on our, we have about 40 movies that we have to wedge in between the day after Thanksgiving and Christmas. So and this year we took on some new ones. So we're a little behind. All right, y'all. I'm just reading these comments real quick. Yeah, there's not a lot of people in here. There's eight people. Hopefully the people that see this later in archive form will uh, tell us about their favorite holiday beers, their traditional meals. But yeah, this wheat um, kind of just brings down the loudness <laughs> of the yeast spice. Kind of mellows out the cherry. I like the cherry of the full Mad Elf, but uh, a Mad Dream ain't a bad thing to have during the Christmas. I guess if it's 4.8% and 11, it's now at about like six and a half. So it's still pretty strong, six and a half, seven. All right, we love y'all crew of Chop and Brew. Thank you so much for always sending us your great home brews and your great beers from afar. Me and Don O specifically seem to get a lot of those and we appreciate it. Y'all wanna come in and say Merry Christmas, goodbye Merry to the Christmas. people. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yay. Boo. Justin Williams, Sean and Emily, Daniel, thank you so much. Chop for chop. Chop for chop. Brew for brew. All right, y'all. Bye. End live video.